What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this week's hair transformations, I'm going to be going over a very simple balayage technique that I like to do. My client here today, she has pretty much a grown out balayage and we are going to work on lightening her up all together and giving her some nice dimension and pops of color. Her goal today is to have more of like a bronze tone. So it's going to be kind of like an ashy brown, but nothing too gray. We're gonna try to keep it more of like an ashy, more brown on brown tone so that you can see how well it goes with her natural color. So whenever a client wants any type of ash brown color, I always know that I gotta lift them a little bit lighter like at least a level eight past that level seven where those orange tones, undertones really show because in order to see the ash tones in any type of color, whether it's brown or whatever, it needs to be light enough so that it can reflect those ash tones. And the best levels that it works on is at levels eight and up. So my goal for today is to lighten her up at least to a level eight and nine and then tone her down using some toners to create a nice bronze ash brown. So since my client, she pretty much has like her grown out balayage and everything is pretty much virgin from like root to mid. And so I'm just going in with like a heavy balayage and highlighting technique to try and get maximum amount of color for her. Um, we are going to be doing some back-to-back -back weaves on the bottom here just to give her ends a more solid effect. And then as we get towards that mid top section, I'm going to start leaving in some dimension to give her that nice dimensional ribbons and then alternating doing the back-to-back -back weaves with some dimensional weaves. Whenever I work on long hair, I like to mix double the amount I would normally on like shorter hair just to like save time going back and forth or um, you know, just saving time in general, do, getting your color and stuff. So for her, normally I would probably mix up like 100 grams of color, but since her hair is really long, I did double of that each time just to save time because when doing long projects like this, especially if you don't have an assistant, going back and forth to remix color can uh, waste a lot of time. So it's good to have like a really big bowl and mix extra because you will be going through a lot of lightener when doing a full balayage like this. So here as I get closer to the crown of her head, my weaves do start to get a little bit smaller. And then notice here as I get closer towards that triangle top section, that is where I'm going to be leaving a lot of the dimension because that's going to be overlaying on top of the back to back weaves that have that solid effect and is going to give me that dimensional ribbon effect as her hair is down and straight. And I like to do this technique on clients who don't really curl their hair because if you were to leave dimension on the inside, you would only see that dimension if they curled their hair. But doing it backwards and having leaving more dimension on the top surface of where everything lays, if they wear their hair straight, you can see the dimension on the top and see the lightness throughout the bottom. And for my lightener, I'm just using some Schwarzkopf Blonde Me Lightener. I first mixed up, I mixed my lightener one to two with developer. And that first 200 grams bowl, I did mix up like a bowl of six and 20. And then every bowl after that, I just used straight 20 just to give that first batch um, some time and everything else to kind of catch up as everything processes.
Also notice as I'm doing this balayage technique and applying my lightener onto the hair, I am being extremely generous with how much product I put on the foil because this is going to give her the most even lift. Even though my client has sort of more of on the finer texture, I still like to saturate a lot so that I make sure that they get a really good lift, especially if you're doing something that's a big transformation like this you don't want to see any warm spots or anything especially when you're doing an ashy tone okay so here is that top triangle section that i mentioned earlier so the first two here are going to be back to back to get that solid effect and then everything after this i'm going to add in that dimension and alternate two by doing um, a dimensional one and a more solid one and maybe even doing more of a baby weave in between and this is going to break everything up and give her that soft grow out when everything grows out and gives that dimensional look as she wears her hair straight as well I also find it super helpful whenever doing like a really long balayage like this to have custom cut long foils because when you go in and um, let's say some of the back foils were ready to be rinsed, laying those foils on top and rinsing at the bottom is really hard to do if you have a bunch of little foils. So this is a lot easier for me to have some custom cut foils for any type of long hair. Okay, so now that I'm on the side, everything below the temples on each side, I do do this back to back and try to make this really solid and a bit more chunky because I want this part to be very bright because essentially this is going to really frame her face here. And I do one side and then meet up to this temple area and then do the other side before moving on to that very front money piece and then lastly do the very top crown of the head. So since her hair is pretty much all dark, I wanted um, to have a pretty bold money piece. And since we're doing pretty much a solid balayage color, I did a few slices back to back and then I kind of marry everything together by ending it with a few baby lights back to back before moving on to the very top side of their head. And since I'm doing the money piece, before I do any type of placement or anything, I always ask my clients whether they want something a little bit more bold or natural, or even if they want a money piece at all. And it's really good to have good communication on the money piece because essentially this kind of frames the whole color and this is what they see the most when they weigh their hair down. So this, to me, is probably like one of the most important parts. Okay, so now that I've finished her money piece, I'm moving on to that last section on the very top. And since my client, she parts her hair in the middle, I'm gonna continue a little bit more further up above that temple area, doing a very back-to-back -back weave. But this time, I'm gonna make my weaves a little bit smaller. And then as I get maybe like four to five foils away from that mid part is where I'm gonna start leaving that dimension because I wanna see those dimensional pops when her hair is down and straight again. And so essentially wherever her hair is just directly parted in the middle is where that dimension is and everything else is weaved back to back pretty much solid. So this kind of gives it that effect that the ends are completely solid even though we technically weaved everything. And this is going to give her a really soft grow out too by having that nice dimension on the part line. Okay, so since my client's hair is pretty long, um, you'll find when you do long balayages like this, sometimes the foils that are closer to the head tend to get heat from the body. And so the foils like right on the bottom don't sometimes don't lighten as well as the root area. So to help that, I'll place the ends of the foils in the dryer and leave like the root area out so that it kind of catches up because essentially if the foils are that long, the ends of the foils are hitting pretty much the shoulders and there's not much heat there on their body. So just a little pro tip when you're doing a long balayage to be mindful that 
if it's long and past their shoulders sometimes the foils is sitting on the chair rather than like their body heat and it really doesn't help with the lightning when their roots are kind of getting pretty warm just from their natural body heat so unfortunately I didn't get the toning part on camera, but for her formulation I did 6-0 with a little bit of dash 33 booster for the root and then I did 7-8 with some clear and then added some dash 33 for the mids and ends. Alrighty guys, so here is the finished look. You can see with this type of balayage and foliage technique, her ends do look pretty dang solid and that root is such a soft, seamless, blend between her natural and the highlights so as this fades it will fade a bit more blonde because she is lifted pretty pretty light underneath this toner but everything is relatively going to blend so beautifully with her natural tone because of the dimension that we left on the very top and still give her that nice color on the very ends so she can maintain this tone with just using regular sulfate free shampoo and then once it starts to get a bit more on the yellow side that is when she can start using that purple shampoo but if that's not enough she can of course always come in for just a toner to retone it to that brown tone that we did. Okay, so that is it for this week's episode. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and I will talk to you guys next week.